What's up geeks and welcome to the channel. In this video, we'll go over how the run length encoding or RLE algorithm works, what it's used for and how to implement its corresponding encode and decode methods using Java. So, RLE is a very simple form of data compression in which a stream of data is given as input and the output is another sequence representing the same data but having a smaller size. On top of compressing the data we have, this algorithm is lossless, meaning that all of the original data that was given as input will be recovered when decoded and nothing will be lost as compared to other compression algorithms such as the LZW algorithm, which we will discuss in future videos. Now, one of the most attractive features of this algorithm is its simplicity in both the encoding, aka compression, and the decoding, aka decompression. And to better visualize these functionalities, imagine you have this string of data as an example, and suppose you want to encode it using the RLE algorithm. To do that, you have to count the occurrences of each character inside this string. So the A is repeated four times, the B five times, and so on. Then you have to append every character alongside its number of occurrences. So the resulting compressed string we are going to obtain here is a4, B5, C6, D7. See, by counting the occurrences, we were able to compress the string we started with from 22 characters down to just 8, which is 65% smaller. And this also means that the more consecutive values or characters in a row, the more space we save in the resulting compression. However, you may have noticed that this algorithm won't turn out to be useful on a sequence of data that frequently changes between values, such as the one you see in front of you. In fact, we could even increase the size of our data, since a single instance of a character results in two characters in the output of the encoding, i.e. an A becomes an A1. Now, because of this, RLE is only good for certain types of data and applications. For example, fax machines and black and white pictures, both of these exclusively contain the bits 1 and 0. Therefore, the input is guaranteed to be made of runs of white pixels in the blank space and runs of black pixels within the text or the picture. Finally, before kicking off the implementation, I want to briefly go over the decoding part, even though you most probably figured it out by now. So, to decode or go back to our initial input, all we have to do is iterate over the generated string and try to extract the pairs of character digits we created while encoding. After doing that, each character inside a pair should be appended as many times as the digit states to a newly created string, and the result will hopefully be the initial text we started with. Okay, now that we know how RLE works and when it is used, let's tackle its implementation in Java. To do this, we are going to start by creating the run length encoding class, and inside this class we'll have two methods, the compress and the decompress methods. Now, if you google this algorithm, almost all the solutions you will find involve while loops that iterate over the characters of the input string and try to count the occurrences of consequent characters, similar to the ones you see in front of you. However, what I want to explain today is kind of an alternative and more generalized approach, even if the traditional one proved to be a bit faster. This approach involves the use of regexes, and if you are not quite familiar with these, don't worry, we already have a video covering all you need to know about them. So, concerning the compress method, the first thing I am going to do is create the pattern that is going to identify the character occurrences for me. The first parenthesis defines the first group of the pattern. Therefore, the backslash 2 represents the second pair of parentheses you see. So what I'm basically saying here is, I detect a character, and then because of the backslash 2 and the asterisk, I want to find all the consecutive occurrences of this same character. Take the same example we had at the beginning. If we apply this pattern on it, the resulting groups we are going to obtain are as you can see in front of you. So inside the first groups of our result sets, we have the whole repeated block, and inside the second groups, we have the repeated character. Now that we know what this pattern does, we need to find matches for it in our input, and loop over the results we found. What remains is generating the output string, and this string is made of each individual character, followed by the occurrences of this character. To do that, we have to create a string builder, append the character to it, which is stored in group 2 of the result we are looping over, and follow it by the length of the first group, which is the repetition of the second one and what we exactly need. That's it. We just encoded our string using the RLE algorithm. 
Let's go ahead now and try to decode it in the decompress method. Similarly to what we did in the compress one, we'll start by defining the pattern that is going to extract the pairs of character digits we created while encoding. This pattern will be formed of two groups. The first one is a single character, the repeated character, and the second group is as many digits until we reach the next character, because we may have 1, 10, or 100 repetitions, who knows? Now what remains is looping over the matching results of this pattern in the provided encoded text, and for each result, we have to append to our final string the character stored in group 1 as many times as it is stated in group 2. To note here that the repeat method I used was introduced in Java 11, so if you're not there yet, you can reproduce the same output using a while loop or Java's stream API. Finally, and before ending the video, let's see our code in action. To do that, I created a main method and initialized inside it the string we've been using since the beginning of the video. I also called the compress and decompress methods on the initial string and the encoded string, respectively. When we print out the results to the console, you can see that the encoded text is as we expected, and after decoding it, we are retrieving the input we started off with. So, that's it for this video, I hope it was helpful, thank you guys for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.